So I'm going to talk about spherical pressure vessel and how to determine stresses in those elements. Before that, let's introduce pressure vessels. Pressure vessels are basically structures that are designed to hold liquids or gases at high pressure. Because of the high pressure inside the vessels, those elements are subjected to high stresses. If we want to design those elements, we need to know first how much are stresses in those elements, either normal stress or shear stresses. Also, we want to know how much are deformations or strains in those elements. These are the topics that we want to talk about today and in our lecture on Friday. Before talking about stresses, I'm going to talk about types of shear pressure vessels that we have. First, we can categorize the pressure vessels based on their geometry, like spherical pressure vessels as we see over here, or cylindrical pressure vessels as we can see over here. So it is just based on the shape of the vessels. The other way to categorize different vessels is the thickness of the wall, because the thickness affects the stress distribution in the vessels. Okay. Assume that we have a pressure vessel as shown here, and we want to determine stresses along the wall as shown in that cut section. In the thin wall section, where the thickness of the wall is negligible compared to the radius or diameter of the vessel, we can make one big assumption, and that is normal stress distribution along the thickness of the vessel is uniform. So that red stress, the normal stress, is uniform across the thickness. However, if we have a thick wall pressure vessel, as shown in the bottom figure, the distribution of stress along the wall thickness is not uniform anymore. In that case, we cannot use the equations that we are talking about today. So whatever we talk about today is just valid for thin wall pressure vessels. For thick wall pressure vessels, we need to develop some other equations to take care of that non-uniform distribution of stresses. All right. <clears throat> so let's talk about types of stresses that are developed in pressure vessels. First of all, I'm going to talk about spherical pressure vessels. So assume that I have this ball which contains liquid or gas. And as I said, it is under pressure. What I want to do here is that I will cut this structure, not in reality, definitely, you know, virtually. I will cut it, and I want to see how can I write down equilibrium equation for this part of a structure. When I cut that vertically, I have basically two kind of forces. One force is the force that comes from the liquid, that would be a uniform pressure, and there would be another stress developed on the wall. The first part, as I said before, is the pressure comes from the uh, liquid. How much would be the total resultant of this pressure? That would be simply area times the stress. So how much is the stress that is equal to the pressure, inside pressure? How much is area? That would be area of inner area of the circle. The resultant force would be P, which is internal pressure, times pi r squared. There is another stress, another force, which is developed in the wall, in that steel wall. I will call it sigma A. The total resultant force would be sigma A times the area of this wall. If I want to determine how much is the total area of that steel wall, I can simply determine that by multiplying the perimeter of this circle by the thickness of that wall. How much is the perimeter of a circle? It's 2r, which is diameter, times pi, okay? So the total resultant force would be simply 2 pi r times thickness. That gives me the total area, and I need to multiply that by sigma a, okay? So as you mentioned, these two forces should be equivalent to each other. Now, I can determine how much is sigma a from this equation. And I will finally get sigma a as pr over 2t. So that is the first equation that we developed in uh, pressure vessels. And the fact about spherical pressure vessel is that that normal stress would be the same in every direction that I cut my sphere. Why? Because sphere is symmetric in every direction. It doesn't matter how you cut that, 
you would get exactly the same stress. So normal stress, as shown in the figure, would be just sigma A, and that is PD over 40. All right? There is not any shear stress developed in this element. However, there will be some sort of shear stress, and that would be shear stress out of plane, or the absolute shear stress. This is actually the enlarged cut section of that spherical pressure vessel that we see. For the outer surface and for the inner surface, I consider two elements. And I want to go and determine if there is any shear stress in those elements. Okay? First of all, sigma A is PD over 40, and we have two elements. I'm going to start talking about the element located on the outer surface of that sphere. So I'm talking about that tan element on the outer surface. We see that normal stresses on the outer surface would be sigma A in every direction, as shown here, right? But there is not any normal stress perpendicular to that sphere. So sigma in the radial direction would be zero, okay? Now, I can go ahead and draw the Mohr circle for each of these three surfaces separately. First of all, if I, see, if I look at that green surface on top, what would be the 2D stress element for that point? If I take it out, this is the element that I have. How much is stress in the vertical direction? That is sigma A. In the horizontal direction, sigma A. So stresses in every direction on that element would be sigma A. Okay? What if I look at that red element on the side? How much is the stress in the horizontal direction? That would be the same. That is sigma A. How much is the stress in the vertical direction? There is not any stress in the vertical direction. So stress in that point would be zero. What about if I consider the blue element on the, on the bottom part? How much is stress in that direction in the vertical direction? Zero in the horizontal direction would be sigma A. So these are stress distributions on three different surfaces of that block. Okay? If I want to draw the Mohr circle for, say, that blue element, how does that look like? That is a principal plane. Why? Because there is not any shear stress acting on that element. It means that the magnitude of stresses on that blue element are, are showing me the intersection of the Mohr circle with the horizontal axis. So what are those values? Sigma A and zero. These are two different intersections of the Mohr circle with the horizontal axis. So if I want to draw the Mohr circle, that looks like this. One intersection would be sigma A, and the other intersection would be zero. That is the Mohr circle for that blue element. What is the Mohr circle for the red element? That would be the same, because that has exactly the same stress distribution. What is the Mohr circle for that green element? One point is sigma A. What is the other point? Sigma A. So that would be actually a dot. Mohr circle for that element is a dot which has a zero radius. Now you tell me this. Is there any shear stress expected to develop in this element, in this 3D stress element? Yes, and that would be equal to the radius of the small circle. How much is that radius? First, we need to determine how much is the diameter of that. The diameter would be sigma A minus zero. Sigma A is PD over 40. And the radius of that would be half of the diameter. That gives me the maximum shear stress. And this radius would be half of sigma A, which is equal to PD over 8T, right? So there will be shear stress, and the magnitude of that could be determined from this equation. Now let me conclude this by looking at the inner element. What is the difference between the inner element and the outer element? In the inner element, the normal stress exists in the right radial direction because on the inner element, we see the internal pressure. What is changing on those elements? The green element would be the same. The red element is not the same because there will be normal stress of negative P on the sides. That pressure is negative, so it gets larger by P. How much is the maximum shear stress in this case? Sigma A plus P over 2. So we have... The same equation as we had before, but the shear stress would be